And we're back. There were caramel rolls. And there were delicious caramel rolls. How many did you have? Uh, an unnamed number. Is that name I four? One. I had one. Between the three of us, we had eight. I mean... We ate eight. So that's the thing that happened. All right. So we have Rhea and Raylan. You guys are killing me with these double R names here. We have Rhea, the once circus wizard turned witch's spy, and then also with a history of working for mommy. Are you still working for mommy, do you think, actively? Or are you kind of like, uh, do you kind of freelance for mommy, like occasionally she'll... Don't say mommy, say mommy. Mommy. In the books, they say mommy. I'm saying mommy. How do you know that they say mommy? It's a okay. book. I listened to the audiobook for the first book in Oz. <laughs> And it's mom. Um, probably freely. It's not like it's so just she'll like, she'll just reach like, out hey. to you occasionally. Uh huh. Are you still on good terms? Like reasonably, like yeah, as good term- as it gets for Mombi. Mm-hmm. What's that? As good as it gets for Mombi. Sure. Okay. And like, yeah, <clears throat> delicious. So, circus wizard, circus wizard turned witch's spy turned. Freelancer in Vertigree. Mm-hmm. Um, who did you try? To, oh, you were trying to recruit the son of the mm-hmm. merchant. I, th- I think I figured out his name. If and, I and to name did him. we did we settle that Mombi, the thing that Mombi has got hiding away that you know about is that it's she's hiding head. Languidere's true head. Uh-huh. Yeah. Somewhere. Yeah. True. Kelly, would you loop around over there to that drawer and grab a tissue for me, please? Thanks. And am I, I don't know, was I supposed to describe, like, who, like, like, what the survivor, like, what his name is, and, like, You can give me a name. I was going to give you the merchant, I was going to give you his father, his dad's name. Uh, You can give me, but let me give you that, and then maybe that'll be of of use to you for other things. So I don't need to, like, describe his personality or anything? If you want, you can. He could be, like, senior, senior, junior. Because I was thinking he's, like... Because they're, like, well-known and stuff, it's, like, everyone, like, oh, yeah, I know that kid, and he's, like, charming and everything. No, really, like, I don't know what's the word, like, confident. The riptide of... Mm, no, 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 <laughs> definitely not, not. no, it's, but like... Not riptide, but also not Chad. Yeah, it's, like, he's the, like... Just, like, oh, you know, he's that kid, he's, like, everyone knows him. I see. But not because of he's doing anything bad, just because he's like he's always got like kind of a smile on his face. He's friendly. He doesn't exclude people. Mm-hmm. Sort of everybody likes him. Uh, da, da, but he's da, da, also like not an idiot. Which is nice. Yeah. He's not not being an idiot. Igric, Igric That's is his dad's his name. Last name or first name? First name. Uh. Do, 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 do. Let me just... Let me tell you some more about Igrick real quick. If I can find it. Igrick of the East. So let me just... I'm going to go... Well, wrong screen here. Do, do, do. Bonk. I'm going to... To the front. Bonk. Igrick of the East is a wealthy caravan master who lives in primarily in Vertigree. Mm-hmm. Okay? Now, today. He's not, he's considered still kind of an outsider, mm-hmm. even though he's been here for like the last two decades. So mm-hmm. he's been here since not long after. How long has it been since um, Ozma and. <clears throat> yes. Join us. How long has it been since Ozma like vanished and Dorothy fled and everything I, went to crap? I don't think very long. I think like not long enough to be like new generation of people. Yeah. But like long like I long mean people enough, are like, age. things have started becoming like this is the way that things work down here. So like a year or two. Oh, more yeah. than that. I would like it to be more than that because I'd like Igri to have come here. Like he's been 
here for like 20 years. People <laughs> age weird in Oz. Like you yeah. guys could be young and, mm-hmm. and still have been here for... Right, time is weird. Time is weird in Oz, Jeremy, right? Bear me that crap. Like seven years? I don't know. Is that I'm sure we can do that. Better? It doesn't happen. I mean, six years? you could have been Mombi spy like when you were 12. Yeah. yeah. Okay, no, we'll, we'll make it like... Yeah. Okay. Let's go with like six. Maybe we should actually, like, figure out our ages so we're not, like, super confused. Again, it's kind of odd, so age is kind of a... Age is a construct, man. It's like... Age is just a number. What's that? Age is just a number. Age is just a number. The whole thing. Oh, my God. And my number is, like... And my number is 45. I'm a senior, and age is just a number. (laughs) Age is just a number. Did you watch Let It Go last night? Please tell me you watched it. No, I didn't. You have. We'll Sorry, let it snow, not let, let it snow. go. Age let is just a number, and my number is 45. <laughs> anyway, all right. Igrick of the East is a wealthy caravan master. He lives in the city in Vitigree. Wait, He's so are na- we six years? Is that... What, wait, if you what want. Six, six, three... Six-ish. Six Oz years. Let's go with that. Six Oz years. Oz years are, Oz years are like dog years. Mm-hmm. Or reverse dog years. Who knows? Um, sometimes both. Um... <clears throat> he has been accruing fortune thanks to a lucrative business of running trade caravans between uh, Vertigree, Fallen Oz, and both, well, primarily the eastern lands, because there are still settlements out there. Um, but just the fact that he's able to get out into the wastelands and, and travel and, and, you know, get back successfully. Igrick's status as an Easterner has still kind of deprived him somewhat of social acceptance amongst the, I guess, what would have been the high and mighty, the, the previous, the, the old noble families and stuff like that. Um, and he's sort of, his, the, the, so that your friend's dad's been kind of like buying his way into the innermost upper class circles. Um... So he's accumulated a collection of rare art, unique treasures to display in his in his manor house, um, all that sort of thing. Tonight he's holding a masked ball at his manor to celebrate the acquiring of another treasured piece of artistry. Um, Sit back. I have a question. Yes. Which one of you... Wait, how did we meet? Did we establish that yet? Not really. Okay. Which one of you first proposed the idea of using the mask as a cover to get into the building and steal some of his some of the stuff from his vault. Probably not me. It would it, it, it would me. be you because I would just do oh yeah sure okay. How did she talk you into it finally? Commanding presence, poker face. We're going to sneak into the vault and steal the things with the mask. Or was it something that his son said where he was just like, I just feel like my dad needs to be taken down a notch about all this kind of stuff. And you were like, okay, so you wouldn't actually mind that much if dad, like... I would probably try and drop subtle hints about, like, how would you feel if someone took something from him? <laughs> or, like, or, or how does how does Igrick treat your friend? Is it a good relationship? Good question. Because if you're like friends with your friend and and dad's kind of a jackass, then... When it was normal Oz, they were like really close. Yeah. And then when it became... Fall. Yeah. It like... um, He started focusing more on just like getting up the social rank and like surviving type thing. Uh Uh-huh. And was like... You're just a kid. Like, you're not going to get me anywhere anymore. Type thing. And became, like, a total jackass. Very cool. Or... One of the treasures 
in Igrit's treasury that nobody really knows. He doesn't usually set it out for display. It's not like a big piece of art or a statue or anything like that. Um, you worked for the Leonine Rangers, and who did you work for, Languadir? Yeah. When you first came down below? Yeah. East? Okay. Um, Wait, so that means Languadir and Mambi? Mambi. Mambi are, like, cool with each other at the moment? Uh, they, have a, they, they have arrangements. Like, with the whole head thing? They have they, arrangements. Okay. Got it. These, the mutually beneficial arrangements does not necessarily... I mean, like, we're best friends. <laughs> yeah. They're like Facebook friends, which makes them not really that friendly mm -hmm. at all. Um, so... One of the treasures that your friend mentioned at one point in time, just in passing, is the fact that he's got this solid gold key with jewels embedded in it. He, he, goes, he never brings it out. I don't think he knows what it is. He doesn't know what a key is? No, I, he knows that it's a key. He doesn't know what it's for. And since he doesn't know what it's for, he can't brag about it enough. So he doesn't bring it out. He just wanted it originally because I, I don't know. I think he thought he would eventually figure out what it was for, and he hasn't yet. So he never, you never see him bring it out. It's always he just leaves it in the in the storage vaults. Um, and he just mentioned this at one point in time because he's talking about like the way his dad spends all his money on this stuff. Um, and he's gotten worse about it since it since before it was like he'd make nice with people, he'd throw parties and stuff. But since Oz fell and all this stuff is kind of out there for the taking, he's just been really kind of creepily aggressive about getting this stuff together. It's kind of like he's looting people's graves almost because, you know, Oz fell and I was like, oh, well, I can get this stuff from this household that people, you know, some people looted some houses up in, you know, the Emerald City and now I can get some cool new stuff. And he doesn't seem to, doesn't seem to bother him. Um, that kind of thing. Hmm. Um, Wait, question out of character. Yeah. Are we necessarily like good, like lawful good type thing? No. Like, this like, is much more definitely is neutral something. I want you to think. Can we like definitely like morally gray? Definitely morally gray. I want you to think like this is you. Yeah, you're not expected to be the superheroes. Okay. You're expected cool. to be people who are making ends meet in a bad situation in a shadowy clockwork driven okay you know yeah city beneath the city beneath the the original city kind of a thing so yeah okay did you ever see the movie ember uh -huh. uh, i think it was ember anyway it doesn't matter <clears throat> so not the character anyway um <laughs> So at some point in time, she would have mentioned the key to you, uh, or it came up with you know whatever. Uh, <clears throat> or like my shadow. And now there's like... this, and now there's a sort of, yeah. When the when the key thing came up, her shadow was like, <laughs> do, like lean in. And then I was like shooting oh, really? like looking at. And she's it, yeah, you're so playing like, it cool, yeah. but your shadow was like. It's like fun. you're being really obvious right now. <laughs> Cut it out. I mean, yeah. Anyway. Um, Steal the key. Um, would you have ever mentioned that to your sometimes employers or anything like that just to see if, if, if they had any idea? Would you have ever put any feel? Let, let me ask that a different way. Would you have ever put out any feelers just to find out what it might be? Unless someone or just like freaking solid gold key with gems in it. I mean, probably useful. Yeah, unless someone asked me, then I wouldn't bother. Yeah, you wouldn't have gotten that curious about it necessarily. What about you? Yeah, I would have asked. Been like, bro, solid, solid gold key with, with the gems. I mean, there are a lot of locked places that. I mean, that sounds like something unnecessarily grandiose that would well, go with Well, if something's locked Emerald with a City. key, and we're both, we both can, like, like, have traversal. You're, you're both a little bit, sh well, yeah, you gotta be able to Could see where be. you're getting to. I mean, not see where you're getting to, but know something about where you're going to. You can't, like, go blind. 
Like, yeah. You, you, you can't go, I want to go to the original castle of the Wicked Witch of the West, you know, well, yeah, if you've never like, been there, you know. Like, um, that sounds like something, like, super grandiose for, like, something in, like, the Emerald Palace. Well, yeah. Lots of things in this new version of things are still locked, and keys like that tend to open important things. So that's kind of useful. Possibly. Could be. In any case, so, um, thus the plan was born. Or at least the idea of the plan. Um, do, do, do. It is midnight. Fun. Um, between the day of the serpent and the day Wait. of the lion. Oh, I forgot to do my write down my hit points. Hold on, sorry. Ten. Okay. Yeah, I remember. It is midnight between the day of the serpent and the day of the lion. A perfect time for larceny. In Vertigree. Because they actually turned the, the artificial sun down. It's always kind of nighttime here, but there's like light sources and stuff. Um, and this big glowing. Well, you kind of see the thing up here. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> in the underground. Um, tonight, the wealthy caravan master, Igrick, is throwing a lavish ball in his stylish manner adjacent to the aristocratic quarter of the city. The purpose of this party is to unveil another one of his little objects of art that he has accumulated in a desperate bid to buy his way into polite society. With the eyes of the host, his guests, and more importantly, his guards, occupied with the new glittering fancy, it's a perfect time to raid his vault for another treasure, the so-called Key of the Unwitnessed Sisterhood. I don't know. Sounds like something important. Between a certain two royal people who were very close at a certain point in time. You have theories about this. I have theories. They're wrong, but they're very interesting. No, anyway. mm -hmm. um, Wait, are they wrong or no? This gold item is said to be encrusted with curiously cut gems. Jewels that could fetch a small fortune if pried loose and sold in the shadowy underworld of this shadowy underworld. Mm. Unfortunately, um, it doesn't seem like you're the only ones who had this idea, and things haven't gone quite to plan because this has been a pretty complicated evening. You find yourself <clears throat> standing in the cellar a, a cellar room leading to where you believe the vault is based on some very like long game <clears throat> month and a half of random you always talk about his vault where even is that like we've been everywhere in your house like where you know and he's like oh it's it's down the basement You're like oh so and so uh, mentally noted random crap um not nearly as alone as you might have hoped, but in uh, uh, something, tell me what went wrong. Actually, back this up. How did you guys, what was your plan of entry? Like, how did you get this far? How did you get down in the basement? Question. Yes. Am I allowed to use my shadow so it can, like, go through a door, see, like, the area, right? And then I can use the traversal. We like, should talk power. about, we should talk about uh, how, um... Yeah, I also have works. a pet crow. We should talk about how stats work. Or a raven. It's a raven. The raven, yeah. Um, so take a look at, uh, you should have the sheet for, like, actually doing stuff? Or no, do I have that? I've got that. Playing a character, here. Have that. Get one of these. Have this one. Being a person. 
taking and evading risk. So when you when so this is this this particular move is really kind of the catch-all for lots of stuff. When you do something risky or evade danger, you roll a 2d6 and add either your ferocity if you're doing something aggressive, intimidation, violent, duplicity for trickery, charm, or lies, or sorcery for magic using technology or <coughs> lore, like figuring stuff out, knowing stuff. So that would be magic. Wait. I want to point out these moves. Rescue, when your ally is in trouble, say why they matter, and then take a big risk to save them before they suffer full consequences of their actions. I want to point out that you can't do that without telling us something about why they're important. Um, okay. Why do you care about this person? Why, why, are they why would you even care? Um, and care? So let's take, and then the other one that I want to point out is this traits thing. So your traits are skills and abilities, like clusters of skills and abilities. If a trait, including whatever you wrote down under queerly appealing and queerly disturbing, applies to what you're trying, explain how it helps in this situation, and share a memory of where you either learned it or like found out more about it, or stuff like that. So you, you tell me some history about that thing. Yes? Can I use disguise? Yes, but hang on. We'll get to it. Okay. Yeah. Um, then check off the trait to do any of the following. You can so you can, when you check off a trait, you put a little checkbox next to it, and that will let you turn a miss into a partial success, turn an ally's partial success into a full success. But you can't do that to yourself. You can't make a partial like you can't make a seven to nine into a ten. You can You can turn yours into a miss to a uh, a seven to nine. But you can turn somebody else's into an and to a uh, into a ten. But you can't do an and to yeah. a uh, for you. Or you can rescue an ally from a miss without needing to roll to rescue them from. So you you can you can use it. You can check off a trait to like basically do rescue without having to roll. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you cannot once it's checked. You can't use it. And then when you get a chance to get off your feet and rest your eyes, you tell us something from your past that haunts your dreams or your daydreams or your nightmares. Then you roll a two d six. If the total is higher than your current hit points. That's your new hit point total. Mm. You can also uncheck, you roll another d6, and you can uncheck that many of your traits. So you kind of refresh over the course of time. Um, forms of magic. Everyone knows at least one form of magic, a wizardry. When using uh, spells of your own or items that use magic or technology, roll sorcery. You get a minus one on the roll if the spell is going farther than you can see. It's a minus one on the roll if the spell affects something larger than a single person. And a minus one on the roll if the spell is retroactive, like I want to change something that just happened. Or it's delayed, like I want this to happen in a minute once I'm not here anymore. Mm -hmm. Stuff like that. Um, you may offset any of these penalties, offset these penalties by checking off a trait. Mm -hmm. So... It's like, I've got all this weird crap, and I, I want to be able to do something in another room, blah, 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 blah. I want to be able to find this person in this building. Or whatever. And I want to go to them. I'm going to send my shadow out to go find the guy. And by checking that tray, by checking your weirdly disturbing, slightly animated shadow, you get rid of all of those penalties for, it's not here, I can't see it, it's over here. So, you, you get what I'm saying? You can use it, but it, it's, a, it's a way of negating penalties or, or, or improving a situation. Yeah. So, you know, what in, in which are, in any way that you can figure out that it applies, it applies. It improves your odds. Um, you may... Uh, blah, 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 blah. Applicable traits affect spells the same way as they affect everything else. Um, one more thing... Um, Oh, I should, should have written down the, the stuff from your pack, but we kind of remember most of it. Basically, you've got candles and matches, and you've got a knife. Make sure you write down the knife. It's a D6 damage. And lock picks. That kind of deal. And a hatchet. Hatchet. I have a hatchet? She has I a hatchet. I have a hatchet. hatchet. In amongst all the other stuff. That's just a D6 roll that for That is a D6. And then the hatchet? The hatchet is a D6 plus 1. And your rifle is a D6 plus 2. 
Yeah. But Wait, it's how not much very is good. The knife? One D just the D six. Okay, cool. Um you also have basically sixty silver dollars. Cool. Each. There's a few things that you could pick up for that. Tell me if any of these things sound like, oh, yeah, we totally want that. Um, bringing pills for temporary, slightly risky <clears throat> knowledge of a profession or a skill. Basically, you take a brain pill and you get a trait that you get to use once. Yeah. Um, I say slightly risky because sometimes things happen mm -hmm. and they the trait that you picked up for a second becomes permanent and replaces one of the ones you have. Things like that. Tea. Uh, heart powders for the animation of inanimate objects or curing cold hearts. Uh, liquid courage for can-do energy and the forgetting of all fear. Some of these can be quite cheap. Um, some hand crank electronics such as hand lights, neon watches. Portable radios. Uh, anything else in here that's really good? Oh, uh, um, uh, stims. Uh, oh, what are they yeah. called? The alchemical stims. Alchemical stims, which are like a good way to get somebody's heart going again when something has bad happened and their heart has decided to not do stuff that it's supposed to do, like oh, pump. I'm not used to playing ones where you can actually die. You can die in masks, not but, easily. But we. It takes a lot of work. It takes really? a lot of work. Yeah, I don't. I, I think I'm good. Yeah. I may be optimistic, but I think I'm good. Yeah. Oh, if I you guys don't want any of that stuff, that's fine. Um, all right, so. I, will break the I just wanted you to have an idea in terms of the tests and everything like that. So. Uh, buh, 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 buh. <laughs> I was asking. Where the heck did it go? Oh, there it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you're in this antechamber to the, I'm going to just show you this screen because i honestly cranking it around to where you guys can see it is sort of a pain. Well, it doesn't really matter. Just picture um, you're in a room in a basement. Okay. Basically. Sweet. What it boils down to. Never mind in the basement. Never mind in the basement. Um... He always makes me go into the basement as much as I hate the basement. Like, every time I say it, like, I have one rule. Don't go into the basement. And he always makes me go into the basement. The thunderous tread of booted feet down the cellar stairs announces the imminent arrival of hired guards from a group in uh, Verdigree known as the Slayers Brotherhood. So they're really nice, cheerful guys that, no, mm -hmm. that's not what they are yeah, at all. Share a drink with you, cut yeah. your head off, you know. Just Basically, Igrick hires these guys whenever he has a party to um, bolster his security. He's got regular guys that, like, mm -hmm. his, his guards for his manor in general, and he, he adds to that security when he's got a bunch of people, like, the things. And also, he's pulled all of his super valuable stuff out of his vault, and it's out in the open, so he gets more guards out. <clears throat> Um, so you can hear these booted feet coming. Um, thieves in the cellar! Ah, shit. Um, let's earn our coin! As he, um, pull out blades and charge in. Now, there's only two of them. Have they seen us yet? Yes, because... So we can't, like, run and hide and wait? Uh, not for this. We're going to find out how fighting works. Yay. Okay. And we're also going to see how, whether or not you, I, I, this is a good way to, to go, well, I don't even know if I'm a badass or not. Let's find out. Are you a badass or not? Honestly, probably not. But Also, okay. there's sorcery and stuff like that. Um, So they're not, hmm, which one of you is sort of shady? You're kind of shady. I'm really shady. Okay, so these guys are probably not very high-ranking members of the Brotherhood. They're like, mm -hmm. you know, basic thugs that got, you know, the, the grunts of the group. The gr yeah, the, the grunts of the group. So odds are they're kind of desperate to earn both the money and some respect. You know, it's like, okay, well, we farmed you out to this idiot to guard his house, and you actually managed to capture and, you know, kill a couple of guys that were going to steal stuff from him? Freaking amazing. You know, that, that sounds mm -hmm. good to them. Um, 
Okay. So, I'm sorry. Did I say two? There are three. Oh, okay, cool. They have... Eh, some people might call it a short sword. Some people might call it a long knife. They've got blades. Medium sized They're blades. good size blades, but that's about it. And um, your weapon does more damage, correct? Yeah, I have a rifle. Well, okay. the rifle's tricky and le- Okay, here's a couple reasons the rifle is tricky. One. It's not quiet. It's not quiet. You're in a house. Okay, no, wait. Like, don't you have a hatchet? Is that she has more a hatchet. Than me? That's still more than me. Yeah, by a little bit. Okay. Um, um, who's, and you're quicker though, mm-hmm. so, um, you also have sorcery. Can I, like, what are your sorcery types again? Um, like my forms of magic. Mm-hmm. Forms of magic, Um, Sorry. illusions, summonings, and traversals. So I'm thinking, like, using illusions, like. If you have illusions, there's, there's, yeah, there's tons you can do with, with messing with these guys. Yeah, um, so I'm thinking, um. Um, either making it look like we multiplied and they can't tell, like, who, like, who's... Or they see you kind of... Uh-huh. They see you skittering around, they don't know exactly where you are, and Uh following you, that kind of stuff. Or, um, like, making it look like their blades, like, turn to dust or something like that. I think... Like, the the blade end. I have an idea with this that I think might be the best... Well, like, they don't... They spotted you... But they don't, they're losing track of you because you're like making it seem like there's more of you than that and they're, that you're moving around in the cellar. So they're like, he's over here. No, he's up. They're back over this way. You know, so they get kind of split up and, and mess with and stuff. And, that. and then the shadows over at you and like. So if you look, so the thing here, forms of magic, if the spell affects something larger than a single person, which in this case you want it to, um, there would normally be a penalty on that, and you want it to be kind of in the whole room, even in areas you can't see. That's also a penalty. Mm-hmm. But if you do the queerly disturbing thing with your shadows, you can do an illusion and then also have the animate shadow kind of add to that. Mm-hmm. So it seems like these shadows flickering around and shadows of people running around and stuff like that. Um, so that kind of builds on it and also negates the penalty, so you don't have to worry about that. You can just Ooh, roll. Okay, and then, but I have to... But you have to check, check your, my... your queerly disturbing... Now, there's no reason you can't narrate the creepy shadow doing other stuff. Mm-hmm. It just but, can't help me like... Yeah, that. mechanically, this is the time it can help Okay, you. then I'm going to do that. Did you really only end up with... Oh, you have three traits over there. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So do a little check next to your... Just next to the word queerly disturbing or whatever. That's fine. Okay. Um, so you roll your 2d6 and you add your sorcery. 2d6? Yeah. Okay. This is your basic. Oh! 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Very nice. nice. Good job. Yeah. Okay. 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 Solid roll, my dude. So now they're split up. Mm-hmm. And they are definitely disoriented because they're trying to... They're, they're, they're seeing conflicting things. Mm-hmm. Um, is there anything in particular you'd like you'd like to with these illusions that you want to trick them into My main doing thing. or believing? Like, one of them ran back up the stairs and one of them runs to chase somebody back up in the next floor. No, or no, no, no. I see somebody, he's standing still long enough for me to attack him, and I stab, and I'm actually attacking one of my own guys, because... That would be awesome, and I'd love that so much, because it's exactly like the scene in The Umbrella Academy with Five, being like, hey, assholes, and then they fight each other, <laughs> they end up shooting each other. I want to do that very much. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, in the meantime, uh, uh, Raylan, are you taking advantage of the illusions? Yes. Um, okay, so they're kind of split up, not really paying attention, and you kind of get a shot at them. I'm going to give you, uh, rather than giving you bonuses for it or anything like that, I'm going to give you, uh, advantage. Okay. So what advantage is, is you roll three dice and take your two best dice. Mm. Okay? Okay. <clears throat> so you roll 3d6, but only take the two best rolls, and then are you physically attacking them with, like, Yes. What, like Swing the hatchet? hatchet around. Are you throwing it, chopping, sneaking up behind them and chopping them in the in the in the bodkins? In the spinal cord. Okay, sure. One more. There you go. 
And uh, you're adding ferocity to this. Oh boy. We got two fives and a one, so an 11. Very nice. Would All right. you also add that because of your hatchet thing? Oh, yeah. Well, that's oh, that's okay. a different roll. That's a different um, roll. Now you actually roll, yeah, right? We have to roll damage in this. This is crazy. Uh, it doesn't just work because I have a will. <laughs> um, so your damage on your hatchet is a what now? Plus one, D6 plus one. Okay, D6 plus one. That's a four. I'm sure it is. I have to go look and see. All right. So, tell me what this is. He like, are you getting him while he's atta like attacking a shadow? Is he yeah, just confused like and like looking around and like, <laughs> and like you suddenly are looming behind him? Are you jumping down? Are you? I think he's like creeping towards a corner where it's like, um, where he like thinks someone is, and he's like. And then it's just axe in the back. Okay. Um, yeah, you absolutely, you're talking about chop to the spine. Like, that's exactly how it goes down. It is a, a particularly meaty and at the same time crunchy kind of sound like as pickles on it. damage is done. Damage. Um, so he kind of like spasms like this and then pull, and it, you let the weight as he's falling to kind of like Pull the thing, pull the thing loose. I'm going to have you roll for the guy who screws up and attacks the wrong person. Oh, uh, okay. So wait, hold on. I'm kind of confused. She rolled a four. She rolled for damage of the divide of the thing. So how well? So first you roll. I mean, think, oh, okay. think D and D. First that, you roll the hit, yeah, yeah, then you yeah. see how okay, much damage that makes actually. Sense. So yeah. I was like, how did she hit him? Yeah, she okay. she rolled the first wait, thing to see if she hit. So you're going to roll, roll, and you're going to add Are his you? ferocity, which is a 1. And I roll 2d6. Yep, 2d6, and add his ferocity, which is a 1. Which is a 10. That's disgusting. And just because <laughs> it's cool... Uh, okay, so you roll... He has a, So you roll a d6 for damage. I'll see how bad it is. And we're going to add 1 to that. Okay, so he... You hear, like... I got a Ugh! Ah, you rat bastard! You stabbed me! Ah! Can you ah! keep it down here? Huh? I said, can you keep it down? <laughs> Shh, guys, guys. Guys. Um, he's only a tiny little He didn't stab kill the guy, but he definitely ruined mm -hmm. his day. He's going to he's gonna look back on this as like one of his least favorite Thursdays. It's of all only time. a sharp metal object in your spleen. Yeah. yeah, look back on it as in five seconds before he's dead because uh, we're going to kill him. So that has definitely, uh, that has definitely <laughs> gone uh, uh, poorly for, for both of them and in fact well this is an interesting question mm. the guy who does the stabbing like completely freaks out he goes I'm sorry I'm sorry I didn't uh, uh, and he turns and runs for the stairs no yeah. shit I got him I got him I got him I got him that's fine <laughs> that would be worse I think than yes you, I, got, you got him I'll, I'll take care of him what, what are you doing? Yeet! Um, yeet a knife! Yeet a knife! Yeet the knife! Do you want me to do it? I have a frog. I can throw my hatchet. Hold on. Hold on. I want to point out that if you yeet the knife, I probably have... Mm, no, I'm, probably it's still for us. No, I'm thinking of for you. using sorcery again. Okay. Um, Or, like, like the traits thing. Um, traits traits aren't really a thing you roll as much as they okay. help you with another okay. roll. Can I can I suggest something? Because I have a trait called hunt. Mm -hmm. So I could like again in theory well, throw a hatchet. Well, no, you can throw a hatchet, but that's and that's fine. Um, my plan was making it look like the door disappeared. What's your other sorceries? And um, right, schools of wizard summonings yeah. and traversals. If you do a summoning, you could summon a snake. You could do a traversal and just be in front of them. Like standing on the stairwell, on the but stairs. I'm up. down okay, with you that. Said that's not how that worked. Huh? I thought you said that's not Well, how I can that travel worked. through shadow or something. Yeah, the whole oh. place is like a shadowy cellar. So if she like, and and like plus she's shadowed like up thing. the whole place to mm -hmm. be creepy. So if one of the shadows suddenly becomes her, like she steps out of the shadows, like right at the stairwell mm -hmm. and is like, 
Mm-mm. No. No, no, I wouldn't even shake my head because even though I don't have the clearly disturbing of oddly quiet, I'm still like quiet. And just yeah. imagine there's like this terrifying little girl just coming out of the wall and just going. <laughs> just <laughs> stabs you in the spleen. Stab. <laughs> Stab. Um, okay, so. Into the eye socket. I'm going to okay. have you roll Sorry. and add your sorcery. Because you are traversing to the door. Moving oh my god, you guys, it's dice. 9, 10, 11, 12. Yikes. Okay. Jamie's spirit of her elephant dice. Are you going to... Are you going to... They're not elephant... Oh, oh. I the spirit sorry. of the elephant dice. Wrong Jamie. Spirit. I'm so confused. Are you, uh... Are you going... Are you... Are you trying to... I think Scare I'm, him back? Are you trying to just, like, surprise him to stab him? Or what no, do you No, like, um... Teleporting, like, not teleporting, but like traversing right in front of him. Like, as he's, I don't know if I can like choke him. I don't know if he's like has arm. Like, what does he have armor on? You are a not small. Really. I'm not. Human. I, I'm like thirteen to fourteen. You are a I, smaller human than he is. But we're on man. stairs. I mean, and the thing is, you're. You know, he's a bigger dude. He's not. He's. He's a. I'm just street saying, thug? Uh-huh. So he's not like, like oh, a street thug. I'm just saying yeah. like adult man compared to no. 14 year old girl. No, then what I'm going to do instead of choking, because I don't know, I just feel like my character is kind of like. You could slit his throat. Like, not like, I'm not like trained yeah. to like fight, but it's like I've been living on the streets. You have fighting. a knife because frequently you know. knives will end an uncomfortable mm-hmm. conversation by simply coming out and being pointed in somebody's general direction. Generally, like, people prefer not to be stabbed. I mean, you don't really like, have to have skill to simply slit someone's throat. Well, no, I'm thinking, like, um, so I'm going to teleport right in front of him. And, um, like, as I'm getting out my knife, mm-hmm. punch him in the face. Like with the handle? <laughs> like, Ugh. Yeah, like punch him in the punch face, him in the with face. The blade. and then like <laughs> it's called stabbing. <laughs> no, no, like with that handle, and, and then like flip the knife around in my hand and stab. All right, I'll give you so your ferocity isn't great, but um, uh-huh. since you're totally got the drop on him with this uh, unexpected sorcery, I'm still gonna have you roll advantage. So again, roll three six eye dice and take your two best ones. Here, you can just borrow this one. No, I want mine. Please, like people don't, like you don't have your own dice in us. So take oh, your two good ones. These are my two good ones for. What does that six. get you to? Six. Okay. Wait, so, can't she help me technically? Oh, uh, no. Oh, yeah, actually, yeah. Um, yeah. So here's the thing. Um, traits. So there's a couple different things. Rescue. When an ally is in certain trouble. And she's going to basically, because you're, again, 14-year-old girl. Um, appears in the thing, pulls up the knife, and he's got a sword. He's kind of panicking. He isn't hurt, and you're between him and out. Mm-hmm. He will run over you. He will stab you and leave you bleeding on the stairwell. None of this is good. Mm-hmm. Um, when your ally is in certain trouble, say why they matter, and take a big risk to save them before they suffer full consequences, okay, you can do that. Or traits. Um, if you use a trait, she can come in. She can come in. You just have to be shush, okay? All right. Traits, if you use a trait that you think applies, Kaylee, um, you can... It's interesting how they did this. You can turn your miss into a partial success. You can't turn her miss into a partial success. You can only turn her partial success into a full success. She Mm -hmm. doesn't have that, so you can't do it. But you can rescue an ally from a miss without needing to roll. So you can just you can either roll to help, or you can check off a trait, a a useful, applicable trait, to help her out. I think I want to check off like hunt. Oh, I will also point out, you could use a trait to turn your miss into a partial success. Oh, and I could turn your partial into a full. I don't need a full. She just needs something. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, then I, I'll use a trait then. Um, what would give you an extra advantage on this? I'll use uh, deception. And then, so, it's like... Um, 
Explain. No, mi- no, misdirection. Sort of. Oh, so. that, and that totally flow. Like, he's just so... Um, he's still... Like, he sees you appear, and he kind of doesn't really believe it's, you, like, a real person because of everything mm-hmm. else that's been going on. So he doesn't really get his guard up all the way. Mm-hmm. All right. So I'm going to have you... You get to roll damage on him, but he's going to get to roll damage on you, too, because it's kind of this mixed bag. You're going to get mm-hmm. cut. Um, that's fine. I'm cool. But... Uh, so you just roll one. Oh, right. One. Yep. Oh, and, right, right. Okay. Yep. Two. <laughs> Eek. And let's see. I tried. I tried to help. I tried to help you. Would you do me a favor? I need to die out of there. Or I could just. Never mind. You could just hand me your orders. <laughs> Alright, bottom drawer. Oh, you think that's funny. Bottom drawer, any one of those dice down there. Doesn't matter. Oh, no, no, no. A, a, a d6. I don't want to roll a d12 on oh, there. That would be right. kind of mean. That would be Use the inner die. Small dice for small damage, is that what you're saying? Mm-hmm. That's a You don't want that. That's a six! No, it is I'm I'm take I wasn't listening to you. Oh. Um So you take two also. Okay. So yeah. There's oh, a little, I thought you were gonna wait, take the inner one. one. I got yeah, scared. Yeah, so, you, so just put it like on one side you've got the ten, but on a minus two on the other one. So you cut him, he cuts you, and you're kind of at a standoff in the thing where you've like slashed him, and he's like, Ugh! Ugh! and you're like, so you've got like a cut on your shoulder. He's been slashed across his like arm, so he's like bleeding on his yeah. forearm. You're still on the stairs. He's at the foot of the stairs, kind of a standoff. There, mm-hmm. all right. The other guy is starting to push himself up. Like he's gonna. Which one? The one who got stabbed accidentally mm. is pushing himself up. Like he's gonna um, go do that thing too. So you've got this guy uh, is entirely focused on Rhea because girl with a knife in the, in my exit, and the other guy is pushing himself up and like. Oh, Stupid son of a... Ugh, and getting his sword out. What do you do? Can I... Where, like, where I, where am I in proximity? Like, am I, like, behind him? Or you're not like, near either one of those, and you're not behind. You're behind the one focusing on her. Because... We're in the stairwell. Look. If I can just... Yeah, just... Box. Box. Stairs. She's here. There's a guy here. And, like, another dude is pushing himself up over here. And you're kind of over in this area next to dead dude. So mm. this guy's dead. This guy's pushing himself up. This guy's at the stairwell. I he wanna, got his back pretty much to you. This I want to grab this guy, like, by the back of the shirt. And, like, push it into a wall. Like, oh. kind of just, like, grab him really forcefully and just... Cause you know, like there's there's like a wall here. Or yeah, you can like, just you can and like, just kind of like grab him and shove his like just forcefully throw him at a wall. All right, I'm gonna have you roll ferocity. What am I doing? D two, two D six. Two D six. D two. Roll your ferocity. And then roll two. After roll D2. you do it, the shadow just comes six, over and whispers. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The shadow come over and whispers, "Dude, I had it. Dude, I got you, bro." That's fine. Thank you. I had it. You didn't. All right. Um, I'm going to roll a, a D6. It's not like, because you're just like sort of uh, hockey. You're you're checking him into the wall, basically. Okay. Yeah? That kind of yes. a thing? It, it's not fatal damage, but it's damage damage. So It's, it's face into a concrete surface. Yeah. Like it's not pleasant. No. Four. You had a ten? Even up? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, he's like, he's all focused on suddenly, you, you, the only thing, the only indication that you get that, and you're facing the right direction, you, you get like the last, like the last three steps before she, bam, and then like, cause she kind of came out of, mm-hmm. he didn't even, he like got the last step and he's starting to, and he's into the wall. He's in the wall. And he kind of slumps and slides down the, the wall. Um, Sarah's laughing at him. You loser. <laughs> from your right, you're the oh. stare. She's suddenly, like, as you're looking, guy is right in front of you. That's out of the way. And down through the room at the other end is the guy standing up. Like, just mm-hmm. stood up now. 
with like the sword and kind of holding his where he's got stabbed. I feel kind of bad for this dude. So that's why I was like, I don't. I just kind of want to like throw him into a wall. I don't. Um. So <laughs> okay. I, I will point out, you have rope. What do you mean I have rope? What are you suggesting? It's, I'm saying that if you're like. <laughs> no. You say hang him. <laughs> no. No. She said hang yourself. <laughs> so she's like, you what? Stop. See, in my generation. The joke would have been, hang him. Your generation is, hang yourself. Because you people are so hard, so mean to yourselves. All right. Stop in the middle of the fight be like, hold on, everybody. Hold on, my dude. <laughs> if both of you were like, if both of you were kind of like weapons out and look at the guy and he's injured and you're like, put the weapon down. Just sit. Sit down over there. We'll tie you up with your little buddy who just stabbed you. Sorry. And... Eventually, somebody will come. I do have a commanding presence. And eventually, somebody will come and let you out. But for right now, shh. And you don't have to die. You've got rope. You could do that. Okay. I'll do that would be... Do, I, I'm close. Tell me... Bef- like. It's your move and you have... Because uh, I'm about to go and stab him. So. I just feel like he's not in... Like, my character feels like he's not an active enough threat to murder. Because murder isn't fun. Super it's fun. necessary. My character doesn't really care about murder. Right. Yeah. Um, with that said, if you got to choose between some sort of force of personality thing where you convince somebody to do something that you want them to do, mm-hmm. comfort zone, versus going stabby, much less of a comfort zone for you. It's like, ah! Put it down. Let us tie you up. You live. We go on our way. Everything's fine. You've been stabbed. You'll look good to the Brotherhood. Because this idiot stabbed you. So he's going to look like an idiot. You'll look like a hero. Clearly we were dangerous because that guy's dead. Put it down. Like cat, that kind of, mm-hmm. like, yeah? Does that yeah. track? I can put an axe through your spinal cord, <laughs> or you can sit nice and tight with a rope. He's got, she goes now, anyway, because you right. just did the body check. And you've got duplicity at... Two. So, roll that, and we'll see how convincing you are. Yeah. Um, just My duplicity is yes. not a two, so you roll, should... Roll regular 2d6, but add your duplicity. Four, five, six, six seven. seven. Okay. Is that like a mid... No, it's not a miss. A seven is a... Oh. It's a partial. If you want to make it a full success, you can push up with a trait. If you want to, like, sort of add to the threat. Oh, I should... Did, never mind. You didn't use a trait. No, she I didn't. didn't. Um, if you want to push her partial to a full success, you can with some trait to, like, add to the threat or something. Yeah. I wouldn't do that. What would... What would what tracks... Commanding you? presence, which is my queerly appealing... So you can you don't and it's presence. You don't even say anything. I don't have to you just do have anything. to move into his line of sight with the bloody dripping axe, and then kick the unconscious guy. Once. And then I'm, <clears> thinking, <throat> I'm the one who says something. You say it. You do the uh, whole. What do you say? So I um, should just mark this off. Wait. Okay, I say very quietly because again I'm. Not very and weirdly, person. weirdly, it carries through the room uh-huh. anyway. Um. Okay. So like. Do it quietly, but coming close oh, enough. Yeah, to I guess. Friend. Right. Uh, so, like, welcome to my ASMR channel. Shut up. <laughs> welcome to my ASMR threat channel. Where <laughs> um, you can feel murdered and soothed at the same time. Okay. Um, so, we already killed one of you, and uh, you're both injured. Um, so, you can just stay there. Put your weapons down. We'll just tie you up. Um, you'll look fine. He'll look like an idiot. Um, and, uh, if you try anything, you know, slight raise of the axe, (laughs) and my shadow will be watching. Okay? Thank you. I love that. That is terrifying. That is so scary. And then my I end, shadow and then, will be watching. And then and then you have but you have to end it with the okay, thank you. Thank you know you, you got it. Yeah. He said he's just like just push it on a nearby shelf without looking, just <laughs> clink. 
<laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and then the shadow with the raven comes up and, like, on its shoulder, like, just comes up and just sits by oh him God. and, like... Okay. That was the wise choice. Okay, so did you check check off your commanding presence okay. thing so that that pushed it up to a full success. Otherwise, we got to worry about some weird negotiations or a double cross or nonsense like that down the road. In this case, he's going to sit quietly till somebody comes to rescue you. <laughs> I'm tying it up, and then he's fully tied up, and I just give him a pat on the shoulder and walk away. <laughs> I love how we're like... <laughs> Bloodied hand just... Yeah, it starts with a pat and turns into a wipe. Like. <laughs> All right. So you're you're you were saying okay. So you're white hair. White hair. Darker skin. Darker skin. Tattoos. Tattoos all over the place. And you're the opposite of that. <laughs> dark dark hair, hair, lighter light skin, skin, and no tattoos. No tattoos, and still Smoke. kind of dressed like from the monochrome world a little mm-hmm. bit, kind of a thing. As opposed to your clothing look, which is more... Did we get into the clothing? What was your... No, really oh, the did. tattoos was the thing, but... It was like the... But we had the drawing that was basically the... Uh, yeah. Hang on. Oh. Uh, where am I at here? It's just like pretty basic, like, darker, you know. Posh. Poshly casual. Yeah, it is kind of a... It's a good look. Yeah, it is. It's a good drawing. It really is. Cool stuff. Um, all right, cool, cool, cool. We're not going to get through this whole thing. I just want to make that clear. This is gonna, okay. this one shot's going to become a two shot in okay. short order, but uh, we're going to get this... I'm sure there will be a num- another opportunity. So, uh... And we can go a little past five. What was your scheme? What was your scheme to get in here in the first place? Like, how did you guys get this far in the first place? You mentioned disguise. You know the, you know the, you know how the party was going to go down. Did you like arrive arrive in costume? Because it was a masked ball, so it was like mm-hmm. everyone's in masks. Did you like dress up as nobles and? wear a mask and get in that far until you could like get into a side room and, and head down the stairs. That's how I pictured it happening. I don't really think I can do that. Well she's got she's got disguise. You have illusions. That's right. I keep forgetting about that. <laughs> Between the two of you looking we're covered. looking like you're supposed to be here is mm-hmm. is probably Because I was like I don't think I can do that because of the whole like kind of smoky ish like Anytime. I feel like you can damp that down to the point I, where it's I just can. like weirdly corner of the eye. Did I just see what I thought? Yeah, I saw? but then like I'm also everyone, a child. But then everyone right, here is, is a little strange. See, no, no, no. no. I want to make yeah. sure. I want to. But then, but then, like I was also like I'm a child. But then, oh wait, I have illusions. Like and at fourteen, and fifteen, the merchant dude knows me. At fourteen, fifteen, yeah, the merchant dude knows you. You you can ask a lot of questions on the source. Honestly, you could have a plus one invitation. Oh, I wouldn't know. I'm, I'm just saying you could. That could be a thing. But um, there uh, are a lot of there's there's very little. Did you why did you have an invitation though? Like you stole it from some other noble that was supposed to be here. There's like a you guys need to watch like uh, Ocean's Eight or something like that where they do. No, all that. I what I probably did is I got I weirdly. I really oh my god! What if you I got, got a conversation with like the, the person in front um, and like just like glanced at their thing and just made a copy of it with your illusion stuff? It's just like. I love the idea of like you showing showing the the guy at the door like a blank piece of paper that he sees as an invitation, <laughs> and the person behind is just. And they're like here, and they're like, uh-huh. here you go, and someone else is like, yeah. like that one scene from Foiled where it's like he he's pulling out like notebook papers and ripping them into strips, and then he turns them into money and just hands the dude the money. You read that book? I never read that book. Mm. Good book. He does that. See, I yeah. was originally thinking, like, get the friend to give me an invitation, but I like this so much better. Yeah. I really thing, need to figure out a name for the, the friend, though. The thing that's... Yeah, so Igrik... Um, <laughs> Ivan? Ivan, that works. Uh, Igrik... Igrik the Ivan. No, Ivan is the Ivan son. Ivan the Igrik. <laughs> Igrik, is, this, is the kind, this is the kind of setting where people don't necessarily have last names. So, it's, you know, Igrik the Easterner. Igrik from the east. Igrik the... Uh, Igrik from the... Igrik. So, <laughs> it could be Ivan Igrikson. 
because he's yeah, that's fine. Egric's son. I, um, I Egric, born from the Egric. Fun fact, this is a thing that just still fascinates me. Um, I think it's Iceland. No, yeah, Iceland. <laughs> the naming conventions for the traditional naming conventions, you never have the same last name as like the rest of your family. Well, no. Your brothers, like if you have a, if you're, a, if you're some, you're, if you're a son, a boy, and your brothers would have the same last name as you. Because it's literally your name, your dad's name, mm -hmm. son. son. So in this case, it would be Igrik's son. Okay? Mm -hmm. If you're, if it's, it's Kat, it's going to be Kaylee Igrik's daughter. It's D O T T I R. And so that's your, that's your last name. And you're not going to have the same surname as your brothers because you're not a son. You're a daughter, so you get daughter on it. Daughter. Daughter. <laughs> anyway. Which makes sense why there's, like, Johnson. Yeah, like. and frequently what you have is those, uh, someone with that name will move to another country where the assumption is surnames are inherited. Nicholson. So that, and so they don't do that when they get to the new country because they kind of want to fit in. So it just becomes Johnson, 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 or Sigurdsson, or... Dolphson or whatever thing. Dolphin son. I was born from a dolphin. Um, okay. The the room that you're in, so there was a flight of stout wooden stairs to get down to this kind of low ceilinged room. All the walls are in kind of a mortared brick. There were crates, barrels stacked along the side walls. Pretty dusty, not often used. Um, there's little niches in the walls that have these thick heavy candle like really really big ones mm -hmm. so they can burn for lunch so they lit them because they'd be running down you know people might be coming down here for supplies or whatever but they aren't going to be down here for long so they lit them this evening and the things would burn for a day mm -hmm. like these are 24 hour candles they're big big things um big boys big boys but they're also not great candles. Like, they're thick. They kind of sputter and pop a little bit because the fat that was used to make the tallow wasn't particularly pure, so they're not great. Um, My candle dummy pick. In the north... <laughs> in the... In... Oh, my God. In the north wall... We're going to make this arbitrarily north. In the north wall, there's this big circular iron door. Ooh. So think iron, but hobbit door. It's round, okay? Um, the movies. It's a round door. Isn't that weird? Um, all right. <laughs> a complex-looking lock is integrated right into the portal's face, and you've got strange symbols all the way around sort of the door frame, all the way around the door. So it's a combination of mechanical and magical. You should do the magic part. Well, she may need to do the finesse part. You also have sorcery. Yeah, I know, but I have things like tinker and Oh, that's a good point. You do have tinker. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so the vault door, if you had to get, you kind of go up to it and like, it's like, so that's six inches thick, at least, um, says the tinker. As you kind of like just wrap on it and get the little, mm -hmm. like just based on that, that's thick. The symbols around the edge are... <laughs> dummy thick. <laughs> My vault door dummy thick. <laughs> okay. The symbols around the edge of the door are magical glyphs from the... Uh, from that that um, you're not entirely sure what they do. You might be able to figure that out with a sorcery check. Um, but there's, there's little glyphs all the way around. Um... The lock looks quite cunning. Not local manufacturer, definitely. It's possible Igrik had it shipped here from the east. Um, mm -hmm. I don't. The uh, to do. I can't remember the name of that kingdom, but you know, their designs. Mm -hmm. So that doesn't look particularly easy either. Any other? Questions or thoughts about that? I don't know. I think I would. I think you should handle the magic part of it, and I can do the tinkering. Because mm -hmm. I don't need to solve the lock. I just need to find a way to take it out of the door. Well, the lock <laughs> is kind of in the door. Exactly. 
So the lock itself, as it like there's like sh like uh, probably shafts through that because the door is thick, right? It's mm -hmm. like this with a CK, not double C's. So shush. Um, so it, imagine it's like six inches thick. It's like this. There's probably shafts that go through the yeah. door into the door frame. Mm -hmm. <sighs> so you got to turn the lock to make the thing not be engaged with the side. Yeah. Um, Plus um, magic. Is there just... any possible way I can try and figure out what all the like yeah. symbols mean? Yeah. Um, just have to do a sorcery check. Who goes first? Okay, then can well, I Well, so you're finding out information right now, so you could do... Uh, can I do a sorcery check? First? Yeah, and yeah. you you do a sorcery, and I you this. need to do kind of a duplicity thing to sort of figure out the ins and outs of the... Like... Fudge! I'm not a good duplicitor. Duplicitor. Uh, that's a that's quite a song. It's not quite up there with the other one that you did that one time with like, uh, oh god, that's still one of my favorite bits where she was like, oh that little song that she sang about like. I'm, I know what you're talking about, but I cannot remember. I'm what gonna have a. I'm gonna have a couple bruised ribs after this. Probably. I'm gonna probably, probably go into the hospital. Oh yes, uh, I'm gonna have a hospital trip after this. Probably <laughs> bruised a couple of ribs. And I just even now, just I love that so much. I want a, I want a musical masks episode. Yes. Uh, no. That's what I can't okay, do. Okay, so. I can do the body swaps. It's the musical episodes that kill me. Okay, so. Uh, okay, let's do a let's do a sorcery check. Uh, yeah. So roll and add your sorcery. Roll See where we're at. Just how much you can figure out what they even do. Five, six, seven, eight. Okay, eight's, eight's fine for this. It's quite simple. Um, basically, they're meant to interfere with any other magic that's cast on the door. So if you try to pass the door with the traversal, mm -hmm. um, so it's not have, like if, a spell it, you have to solve. It's just keeping other spells... Like it just dispels Let, other magic. Let's say you were trying to use a magic, and I don't know if you've got one that would do that, but um, if you're trying to use magic to get past the door by like command traversal, the door to open, command the door to open, uh, that kind of stuff, it's going to make you function at a disadvantage, which means roll three dice, take the two worst rolls. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's <laughs> it's not. It doesn't make it hard. It doesn't make it impossible. But it doesn't make it much more difficult. Yeah. Um, which means probably traits are coming in so you can offset penalties, all that kind of crap. Um, you could also use a trait, rather than using a trait to turn a failure into a partial, that kind of stuff. You could instead use a trait to, if it was the kind of thing that applied to the sorcery, use a trait to negate the enchantment on the door. So like, I'm, I still want to use a traversal, but I'm going to burn my blah, whatever that happens to be. Mm -hmm. That would help me get around that. That's or I could just open the door. The lock is super tricky. Um, it's quite complicated. Uh, in what any case, you guys are probably going to be working to together. To open it. You have to use duplicity. Oh. Um, who's got the lock picks though? She has we the lock both, picks. We both have lock picks. Oh, you both have lock mm -hmm. picks. Yeah, um, you went, I mean, and you've got Tinker, so that helps. Mm -hmm. She might also need to take. There are complications if you don't if you don't hit a perfect thing. You can get the door open. Could we both command the door to open? I don't have command. Oh, I thought you had command. Never mind. Um, could we, like, both be looking at it, like working on it at the same time, and mechanically, like, how many we would we be rolling, or like, let's say I were doing it, would I be rolling a two d six? Yeah, okay. we're always rolling a two d six for anything except for damage. Okay, mechanically, could I roll one d six and she roll one d six? And we do that, and then add duplicity, and like, if, and because of the tinker thing. One of you guys would roll, um, do you have something that would help your roll? Like a, a like a trait that applies to this, like the lock picky kind of thing? Can you see? Would I you have, have spy? Yeah. Spy would work. 
Okay. Okay. So you could roll, you spy if things don't go quite well. Um, she could use Tinker to push you up some to, to, to push you up further, and you guys could be working together on the thing. Okay. Does that make sense? Uh -huh. Do or you could, you know, whatever. Um, a seven will open it. Mm -hmm. A ten will be better. Yeah. For a couple of reasons, but um, so. Do you want me to roll because I have the deep place? Sure. Yeah. Do that because this would be nice. Uh, darn it. I'll let you guys roll box cars, and it won't matter what you got. Cause <laughs> I got like, a four and a five, so that's nine, ten, eleven. I mean, that succeeds without complications. So there is a complication on the door itself. Mm -hmm. It's like a reverse trait uh -huh. that pushes you from a normal success down to a partial. But what about her using her actual trait? If she uses her actual trait, well, she can use, this is the thing. If she, she uses, can use her trait to take a failure up to a success. She can't use her trait on herself to use it to a success. But I can, you can use a trait to you get can use me Tinker. Up. I can use Tinker to help her. Uh -huh. Or you could use, well, we'll say Tinker. Yeah, let's go with Tinker. To get okay. me so back. You check off too. Tinker. So as so she's starting to get it. She's like, I've got it, I've got it. And there's like a spring loaded mechanism that is actually um part of the door, like one of the plates uh -huh. in the door, that as she's turning it is about you see is about to slide in and you, uh, I don't know how to explain this, but you know like you ever seen like ratchet wheels where the wheel will turn mm -hmm. and there's like mm -hmm. a tooth thing that drops into the yeah. thing as it goes so it won't roll back? Yeah. Um it's like that is about to drop in and make it so that when she needs to manipulate it the other direction, it won't be able to go. Like, it'll, mm -hmm. like, stick her. And she'd probably be able to get it open, but it's it's going to take her an extra lot of time. And you, like, quickly get in there with, like, your picks, and you're like, oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, go. Go, 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 go. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and it, it, you know, bring it back like that. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, so we have a 10 and 11. But... 10 and, yeah, 10 and 11 got pushed down. Tinker pushes it back up. And Excuse you're like, me, no, okay, sir. Okay, okay. Not today, now, Satan. And we and we're gonna pull it out on three, two, one, and we and it comes up. It's remarkably sunk. This is a good door. This is a really good door, and it is in fact about six inches thick. Mm -hmm. So, um, the smell that hits you when the door opens, <laughs> you have no. It smells You're, okay. rich. So the smell hits you. Yeah, rich is one word you described. Wait, one word? Wait, one thing from... Uh, remember when Shane visited Jeffrey? He's just like, why does it taste better at your house? Oh, probably the air. <laughs> so your bird mm -hmm. goes from here to over here immediately as high up on the wall as it can get on a shelf and squawks like... Argh! Okay. Shut up. Shut up. Don't tell my bird to shut up. Reaction to the... You smell cats. You smell something you don't recognize as cats. Mm -hmm. You smell cats. You smell big cats. Cats from Cats the Musical, the creepy ass trailer? No. <laughs> cats from Eat Your Face. Um, low angry growls and hissing rings through the room as the door is the door swings open silently Hello, like, friends. there's the hiss and there's a thing going on um wait so you know that one you know like that one tv trope where it's like you know the animals can sense if you're afraid mm-hmm that I've works got, really well on dogs. I've got supernaturally unfaced. Oh my god. I'm still gonna make your old duplicity. <laughs> Alright. I tried, I tried so hard. Wait, what am I doing? Like I, so you smell it, you're not like you're going like, like am I with her? Like, yeah, because you guys were swinging open the door. Okay. Like this. Two Spotted desert jaguars from the east. Oh, hi, friends. They are... Am I rolling? Let us say... Either one of the two of them are worth the... Are, are by themselves worth the three guys that you fought previously. Now, what are you trying to do? I, uh, command? Yeah, like, like just walk into... You the have room. command, the sorcery, right? 
Yeah, just like walk into the room and be like, stand down, and they're just like, you know, like that thing. I'll have you roll and add your sorcery. Thank you. <laughs> My sorcery is a plus two, so. Well, if you had, if you didn't have command, it would have to be duplicity yeah. and, your, and your trade. That is a twelve. Wait, what? That's a ten. 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 And sorcery ten. is a two. Oh, you guys are both. You're like the sorcery sisters. You guys are like the obscene. Yeah, (laughs) obscene with the sorcery. She's got no duplicity. You have a two. You have no ferocity. She has a one. Mm -hmm. We balance each other out quite well. Yeah, we're the dynamic. It's interesting how they balance some of this stuff out because it isn't like every one of the questions isn't like you get two traits and one of your stats goes up. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's like here are two magic. You get no traits, but two of your stats goes up. Like with Mombi. And you get a thing. Mm-hmm. Sometimes mm-hmm. the thing is useful. You have a rifle. Sometimes the thing is, you have this mysterious thing with like three lozenges in it. You don't know what they do. <laughs> um, are they suicide pills? Who can say? Who can say? You don't know what they do. Do you want to find out? They could be suicide pills. They might make you really smart. Who can say? They might make you fly for five minutes. Just that would be enough. stinking awesome. Just... Make they sure might you have make, that timer going. They might make your head detachable. <laughs> by exploding your neck. <laughs> it's detachable. I didn't say you'd survive it. You swallow the lozenge. The lozenge explodes right here. It Boom! Just, it My just, head's detachable! It turns into a, like a metal plate that just... T- it's not super painful. All right. Yeah, more painful than it blowing <laughs> my neck out. <laughs> the room contains only scraps of bloody meat. A low sand-filled box containing cat scat and a clay bucket with a rope handle filled with fresh water that's kind of like sort of right in the middle of the room. Mm -hmm. Like a a good-sized bucket, like a a big bucket. Necessities. And a rope. So big thing. And the rope goes up into the ceiling. There's actually a hole in the ceiling. That's the That's about five or six feet across. That's not the vault, no. Um, Basement by uh, no, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry. You it, can't it, blame him. There's a giant ass vault door in the basement. You can't blame him for thinking the vault was in the basement. The vault is in the basement. It's just that's not the that's not the vault. Okay. Uh, so the hole is like three feet by three feet. You could theoretically get up on it, but it'd be narrow like a chimney. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um. So the stand out thing, they they. Hmm. Command, they retreat to corners. Mm-hmm. They don't, like, suddenly love you. Well, yeah, that's, what, just, that's what I wanted, all right. anyway. All right, so... I just need them to be smart enough to leave me alone. That one's very nice. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. So, center of the room, three-foot square shaft, up out of the ceiling. The ceiling itself is about ten feet up. Is there anything of value in this room other than the cats? Yes. Give okay. me. Excuse me. Um. What's our plan for getting out? We're just gonna run through the party, just like move out of the way, well, please. Well, the stairs down here are kind of into a side room. There's a couple different ways you can get out. Um, okay. You could. I mean. Are you guys still kind of wearing your noble attire, or did you stash that in the other room? Well, or? it's not really I, like a stash thing, because it's... Just, oh, wait. For Mine me, is just an illusion. For her, it's so just, I just, just For me, I guess I would probably still be wearing it. Okay. So you're trying not to get it too bloody, which up to this mm-hmm. point has really not been a problem. Mm-hmm. I'm just very clean. You wipe off your axe on other people. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> so you could go out through the... Now, so... Uh, I'll, I'll give you this one for free. From underneath the shaft, you can kind of hear, not directly, but like up, and then probably in the next room over, you can hear kitchen noises. Like a mm, full that on kitchen. So it's like a pantry or a side room or something where they can drop down stuff, meat, lower the water bucket, and not have to actually interact with the thing that will eat me. Mm. Are the jaguars the treasures as well? Like No, they're guard cats, probably. What are they guarding? The treasure? Where? Across the room. <laughs> Where's she at, s- though? Okay. Across the room, a stout, 
bronze door of curiously crimson tint stops any further passage into what's probably his fault at this point. The face of the door is inscribed with flame-like patterns, and there's strange symbols, again, all around the edge. But although this isn't a round door, it's an perfect, actual door. No, perfectly square. So it's kind of like six feet by six feet. A single keyhole sits dead center in the middle of a circular plate in the middle of the, so circular plate right in the middle of the door keyhole no handle Weird. um stick my arm in there my arm is a lock <laughs> oh okay um, it's a normal size keyhole the plate's like this the keyhole is normal in that plate okay. right there in the dead in the middle rest of the door metal door bronze Kind of reddish tinged. Would it be a duplicity roll to unlock this door? Um. Because if so. Well, okay, there's magical symbols all the way around the outside edge, so it's probably got some magic going on with it. Mm. Is it like the same basic stuff as the last one, or would we. No, have to this like one's a little bit different. Um. Definitely picking the lock would be the first step. Mm hmm. Have we, have either of us tried walking in yet and seeing what the Jaguar is? Oh, they retreated to corners. They're going to stay out of your way until, they're just going to stay out of your way. Uh, okay. The whole stand down thing basically worked exactly as intended because you guys okay. rolled well. Um, so they are not a factor for you two at this time. Mm. Okay. And is my Which is lucky because they're pretty freaking terrifying. Mm. Is my raven still like not... Once they're kind of, you can you can make him like Come get in. over here, you chicken. Yes, I called you a chicken. <laughs> but it's not. Even, I am aware it's not even that. that. It's just like I'm looking at. If him. he's an Oz now, but he's from the regular world, can he talk now? I think he can only like whisper to me. Okay. Or whether and or not he can only, like, or he chooses to uh -huh. only. Yeah. I've only seen him whisper to me. The uh, return to Oz thing. There's a funny thing in there where Dorothy, when she comes back. Uh, one of her farm chickens comes with her, and when she comes over, the chicken can talk. Like, and it's basically making, like, comedy cracks and mm -hmm. comments about every ridiculous thing that they run into. Man, somebody needs to clean this place. You know. By the way, we have eight minutes. We can go a little bit over five. I just didn't have anyone to really take me home mm -hmm. after that, but if you guys can take me home. We'll get where... We'll take you home. I have a good place where we can stop once okay, we cool. get where we're going. All right. Are we, so, so, are we opening the lock, or who's opening the lock, by the way? Well, who would make sense to open the lock? Um, is it a duplicity roll? Because you should do it. It is a duplicity roll. It's a duplicity roll. You should do it, then. Okay. Hold on. Because I do not have duplicity. I am ferocious and magical. What's your... You have command, and what's your other type of magic? Uh, trans... trans Traversing. Traversing. Okay. What are you doing? <laughs> hey, Kayla, can you flip on the light? Six, for me? seven, Never. eight, nine. I have a nine. Okay. Good job. That was good. Um, Succeeded. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, sorry, that was really loud. It's okay. That was not what I intended to do, <clears throat> or what you asked. Freshly succeeded. Uh, it's not what I intended, or what you wanted. <laughs> Nobody asked for that. <laughs> um. Okay, so you get in there and you're like, okay, this isn't nearly as hard as the other one. This should be no problem at all. And you're getting in there and like, okay, go. And the plate stays exactly where it was. You're still got your locks in your your pick lock lock picks in the hole, and you've shot the bolt or what you felt like the bolt. This is important, Kaylee. So we just scratched my foot. Did you did you say you were sorry? No, she laughed at me. <laughs> okay. Punish okay. me. So she's in here, picks the lock, goes like this. The door, the plate stays right where it is. The door, all around, all the metal part disappears to be replaced with burning fire. 
Burn! So the wall is now a wall of flame. Okay, New problem. New problem. Um. Transverse. Ow. Moving through, we haven't talked about what your traversal looks like. Is it making smoke? No. Magical fire. It's just the heat part. And a lot of it. You're not like, you're not taking damage, but the hair on like the back of your hands and stuff is like singeing. So you get that like, mm, that mm, burned, burned hair smell. Yay. Like you wouldn't want to stay in this situation for long. And you think you could probably pull back. It's not going to make any difference at this point. So you can step back away from the door like, Dah! No, but, I'd probably pull back and stumble back. Yeah. Um... Because the door just turned into fire. <laughs> okay. I think the way that mine would work is like mirrors. Like reflections. Okay. Like That just sounds really cool. All right. Then that's a perfectly legitimate reason for doing it. All right. Um, you could... Either one of you would know this. Uh, oh the God. door's flames can be extinguished by unweaving the magic that creates them. Because they are purely magic. They're not running off of a fuel. They're just magic being channeled here. So the trick would be channeling the magic away from it. The risk here is that it's going to take quite a bit of time because there's a lot of power coming into this. And you run the risk, if you don't channel it very carefully, of being the conduit. Which is going to hurt. Question, would the conduit necessarily die? Can we get through it? Uh, could you survive the damage? Mm-hmm. Awesome. If you're careful. Like, how, no, how likely... You're not going to immediately burst into flames and die in it. But, but like, if I'm not careful and it ends up going through me, right? How, how likely am I to die from it? Um, Would it be possible for me to transverse into, like, this room? You don't know if there's any reflective surfaces in the next room over. And there aren't any in here at all, except for the water bucket. You don't have a compact. What? Also, I don't know that you... I, I, we, we should talk about how this all works, but I feel like you have to have something that's at least reasonably close to something that would fit you somehow. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Even if it's something where you turn sideways and kind of go through a narrow thing. Mm -hmm. um, and there, there's no way... Generally speaking, you don't want to be on the mirror side of things if you don't know where you're going. Because that's an easy way to get super lost. Because everything's backwards and upside down and weird. But how likely would I be to die? You're not going to get one-shotted. You probably won't die. Let me put it this way. You'll know when you're getting close. And it doesn't have to just be you, but it does have to be both. I mean, if, if both of you are doing it, you both have some roles to make while you're doing it. How so you can guys, I make it go faster? Make what go faster? Like, um, dealing with it. Because you said it would take a while. It's not a time thing. It takes more than one role. Oh. It's, mul it's multiple. Like, you got to stage it down. There's enough juice. to You can't just bleed it all off in one go. Yeah. Okay. Because you're going to look like somebody who spontaneously combusts. I mean, I'll try. I mean, okay. I'm down. All right. The first roll, this is going to get weird because I'm actually going to roll. Ooh. Ooh. But your first roll is just a straight up sorcery check. Just to, Actually, we don't even need to do that. You just need to establish sort of a magical conduit, a connection with the door. And are we able to, like, switch off rolls or can it only... Like, I want to do one. Sure. Yes. Uh -huh. Like, first I'll go one of So... You have command, and what's your other type of sorcery, Kaylee? Traversals. 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 It's a door. I feel like traversal is almost like... The way I'm saying this is you need to just establish sort of a magical link. Mm. To a door. So basically you just need to put some magic into it. You know, it's, it's like mm -hmm. Peter Grant. Like, just put some magic in the thing um, and establish a conduit through which you can siphon power. Because you got to siphon power away from this thing. Okay? I'm only asking, is it a command thing or a traversals thing? A command thing. 
Because traversal could be, I'm going to traverse, I'm going to pull some magic away from it, but command yeah. thing. Command thing. You know. So Simmer make, down. <laughs> Simmer down. I like that for the fight. Um, what about you? Kind of reminds me of like a, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, from character. If I, like if I have to use a trait, can I use my queerly appealing of calming presence? Calming presence? Like. Sure, if it needed to come up. Okay. You don't need to do it right now. Which kind of what, yeah. what kind of sorcery do you want to use as your sort of establishing link? Um, summonings. Well, I like that because mm -hmm. you're, you're summoning yeah. a best friend. Or... All right, so you establish establishing link is just as easy. It's it's as straightforward as I'm not making your role. Okay, it's both of you. It's like let's just establish like who wants to go first with trying to bleed some of the power off. I should do it. Okay. Okay. An O with a swoopy thing afterwards. O whoop. Okay. It's like a backwards P with a tail on it. Alright. Um So here's what you need to do. You roll who's going first? Sorcery. And you have to roll more than me. Mm. And succeed. Like if I roll a two and you roll a four, nice, but no. Four. No, ew. Five, six, seven. I have a seven. Four, five, six. Ew. She has a six. If I swallow it, you can't see what number I have. <laughs> Am I able to help in any situation or in any way? Um, you could use uh, Kelly. You could use a trait that would push you up to a partial success, would, which would I'm gonna the rule would be enough to push you up past the the threshold. If you have a trait that would work for this command thing, what's the repercussions? You're going to change. Okay, so like, what's the what is the goal? Like, what am I trying to do? You're trying Describe to pull. Action. You're trying to pull the magic that powers the fire away from the door. Here you're doing it in yeah. pieces because you can't do it all at once. Mm -hmm. um, if you, you know who could, if you, could. if you, shut up. It's magic, not fire. Um, I'm sorry, but let me see your nails. It's magical fire. So I can judge them. Deal with them later. <laughs> okay. Shush. Um. Da, 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 da. Da, 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 as long as you reduce. Okay, basically what's gonna happen is I get to roll damage against you. If you if you let the failure stand, nothing nothing happens really with the door, but your first attempt to channel the energy, it, it instead of going past you in a way, it goes yeah, I just don't know what type of trait would work for this situation. Like, what would... Something that would indicate your willpower, your ability to... You already burned commanding presence, so... Because I'm supernaturally unfaced. I don't know if that counts. If, like, you feel the heat burn... Like, okay, let me give you an example. Um... You need to move the skillet off the... Off the burner but you forgot it's like a cast iron skillet mm -hmm. and somebody grabs that thing goes ah it's hot and drops it and bang 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 and it does you know food goes everywhere and you just go son of a mm. uh so i just you deal. just you just deal with the pain of channeling, so rather than losing it and having it hit you really hard, you take a little bit and continue to. Okay, shove I'm it gonna up. do that. Okay, take two points of damage. Rather than me rolling. Ah, I see. You're gonna take some, but you channel enough of it away that it doesn't. Eleven minus two is nine, right? Well, you don't have to leave the eleven and just put the minus two on the other side of the slash. Oh, I just, I just change it from an eleven to a nine. But we okay, fine. That's fine. Sit back. Spell what? Sit back. I'm comfortable. No. <laughs> no. 
All right, you want to try? Mm-hmm. All right, you're going to roll. You're going to add your sorcery. I'm going to roll. Four, five, six, seven, eight. I have a seven. You beat me. Wait, okay. did you add your sorcery last time? Yeah, she did. She rolled no. a crappy number. Oh, what? I did? No, I didn't no, add my we sorcery. got the same thing. You have to roll your sorcery. Oh, I, I didn't add it here. Cause I so, all right, uncheck your unfazed thing, then. Yeah. <sighs> Uncheck the unfaced thing. And you don't take the damage. I gotta you got to actually add on your stuff. Well, I didn't, I didn't realize I could do that. Okay, so I get an 8. Yeah, and you beat my 7, so easy peasy. Okay, who's going to take... It's it's probably dropped by two-thirds in intensity at this point. Jump through it. Just go for it. No, it's no. still quite hot. It's so <laughs> dumb. Do you want to go for another one? Do you want to go for another one? I'll go for another Alright, go for another one. I'll Don't see what I got. Da, 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 da. Roll. <laughs> Three, four, five, six. Ooh. Five. What'd you get? Seven. Ten. I can do it! I can uh, help! You can push her up to a full success if you have a trait. Oh, I do. Uh, that would help her. That would help her. If she's taking damage, can I use, like, repair? No. No, that's for repairing things. You can do the uh, uh, the rescue thing. The res- What's the rescue The rescue thing? move. Look at the playing your character rescue. When an ally is in some trouble, say what they matter and take a big risk to save them before they suffer the full consequences. But you can also turn my partial success to yep. a full success. But I have to use a trait to do that. You have to well, I'll, I'll allow the rescue to do that. The risk is this, that you're going to help her with the channeling. So, so you roll the sorcery. Too. If it isn't a full success, you're going to take the damage instead. Sick. Let's go for it. So basically, Since you like so damage. do you like put your hand on her to help with the channeling, or what do you what do you do? Just, no. Yeah. Before you can help, tell me why she matters to you. Because she's my partner in crime. Because we've been. But that's that's a that's a fact of what's true about this. But how did yeah. how did you get to that point? Tell me something about how you how you grew into this relationship, this partnership, this whatever. Becoming friends with the seventh grader, basically. No more an eighth grader this time. Let's see here. <laughs> you, I, you were in a place. I'm thinking like alley, like. Mm-hmm. I, I want to throw, do whatever, but I'm gonna throw this out. You worked with Languidere. She worked with Mombi. Languidere and Mombi have at least some sort of. It's possible that you guys were around each other for some reason at some point in time, and that's how you met. This is because of the people that you were working with. I'm just, yeah, I'm just throwing out there. I was just thinking of like, you know, you were getting mugged, like you were basically getting mugged for like the first time. So like you were As opposed quite to the like, other 14 times that you were mugged. You weren't quite like. It's a problem. You weren't quite like. <laughs> they see you a your first you reaction really wasn't mean. exactly knife yet. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was just like, I don't know, I just. So you well, have kind surprisingly, of a, you have kind of a protective. Mm-hmm. She's the small, surprisingly the small like child. a young girl is an easy target. <laughs> Whoa, uh, who would think that? So I just protected the small child from. Okay, me. roll on that sorcery and see if you can get a full success. If you don't get a full success, you take a damage. And I whispered again. I don't need your help, okay? She What'd got a three. Plus Four, two five. is a five. <laughs> Okay. Uh, roll a d6 for the damage that she takes. She takes? Okay. Me? Yeah, you roll the damage. Because it's your fault. A three. Fuck you. Okay. Three points of damage. It's not that bad. It's better than you than me because I only have eight hit points left. It's still a success. Well, no, a, now we're at the same hit point level, fool. Sister. Yeah, and if I took three, I would have five left. Oh. Right. Sisterhood. Yeah. Damage sisterhood. Yay. Okay. Um, all right. But that is enough to pull off the fight. Like, you to, like it, you basically grounds out in her, but it, you do see the last flickering flames of the door kind of die away. All right. We're going to quickly... I'm just going to get you this room real quick, and we're going to figure it out from here. All right. Beyond... It's really hot. <laughs> Beyond the bronze flame in the scribe door is a surprisingly small chamber, measuring less than 10 feet. No, leave that on, please. 
Uh, rows of mostly bare shelves line the walls. Um, probably because most of the stuff that was in this room is upstairs on display. Mm -hmm. um, there's a small, like, little... I don't want to say chest. That's not right. Like a little coffer, like a like a jewelry box, mm -hmm. kind of that that size. Um, a chain link bag and a wooden box are the only objects apparent. Um, I'm going to quickly jump through this bit so you can find because none of this stuff is trapped. So everything. So um, there are clean patches on the dusty shelves where other stuff would normally sit. They're not here. The wooden case has deeds, contracts, and just other business records pertaining to his caravan operations. So. Maybe useful, but honestly, complicated. You'd have to find people who want to like screw him on business and Which want this information. Really it's not really why you're here. The chain mesh bag looks like the bag that like where they hold the household funds for just sort of running the business of the house. Mm -hmm. Which isn't to say there isn't like 150 silver dollars in here, but uh, that's all. You know, it's a it's a bunch of silver and copper coins, that kind of stuff. You can absolutely take it. It's still like 150 bucks in the bag. Mm -hmm. That's useful. The coffer, the little hinged box thingy, holds uh, the key that you were looking for, nestled in a little bed of ebony, black ebony satin. It's fashioned from gold and bears three unusually cut amethysts of the darkest purple. One of the stones is like a lozenge shape, like a like a like a gel cap, mm -hmm. Tylenol. Kind of thing. Uh, one is scent cut, which you can, if you do a search for a gem, like scent cut gem, you'll see what it looks like. And the other one's sort of a trapezoid cut. The key is big. It's like eight inches long. Like it's a sizable key. It's a sizable key. And by itself is probably worth like a hundred gold, which is like a thousand bucks if you just sold the key straight out mm -hmm. as is. Um, Sell it back to him. We stole your key. You want it back? And it's you got, have to pay for it's it. It's got like these kind of engravings along the along the chimney of the thing and along the handle and stuff. Um, you're a tinker, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to make you roll for this. Those aren't engravings. They're seams. The key is actually... Okay, have you ever seen those those fidget rings? You see them at Renaissance Fairs and stuff where it's like three rings that weave in and out of each other and you can kind of take them apart into their little separate bits mm -hmm. okay the key is like that it's three separate pieces that if you get it and kind of twist it right it locks into place and it's a key but if you twist it the other way it'll all come apart into separate pieces where each piece has one of the gem piece gem things on it mm -hmm. and it's big enough that you think probably it's hollow and it's kind of like wait a second plunk if you want to there, there, there's got to be something inside the key. Yeah, but maybe we can do this one more. Well, oh, yeah, let's get well, out okay. Right now, you have two guys tied up two rooms away. If anybody else tries to sneak up on you, they have jaguars waiting who are leaving you alone, but not anybody else. Yeah. You have a minute. I want to open the key. And also, I want to read this thing, and then we can stop okay. there. So we open the key, like, cool, like good, like good thieves do? Um... There's, there's got, it's gonna be like a riddle. Your friend Ivan never mentioned this whole thing about the key coming apart. So he never I mentioned the jaguars either. That's fair. <laughs> um, all right, disassemble. Hollow cavity inside contains a small rolled piece of paper that smells. Uh, faintly like incense. Read. Smells like incense. Burn all right. Uh the page bears writing in both a. Well, two different... It's got two messages written. Um, one is in... Ozean, And... Uh, uh, one's in English. What? I was right. The key of the two people... Of the two sisters? One of them is written by... One yeah. of the messages is written by Dorothy and the other one is written by Ozma. No. But I like it. But no, probably not. There are other people who know English, like either one of you. Yeah, can we read Well, no, actually, I'm not sure if you're from... You have a history. You didn't do a history from... You may not be from the monochrome world. I definitely am. Uh, all right, so... Oh, I'm... 
Sorry. I, I, my notes here are screwed up. It's not in English. My bad. Oh, okay. My bad. It's in like some dialect from the east, from mm. the Eastern Kingdom. Oh, I got it. Sorry, my bad. Um, I thought I'd crack the code, but I guess not. Oh, it, it's so cool. And I will use that again later because we'll have Ozma and, and, and Dorothy Clues later. It was, it was cool. It, no, it was right? wicked. It's wicked yeah, cool. No. Um, the Osmian, the Osmian reads, beneath neither cup nor chain, nor moon do I stand, but under the gaze of the visaged face, secret and awaiting the touch of hand. This is where our resting place is to be found, safe from thief, from heretic, or from sniffing hound. Well, that's not fucking helpful. What does this do, like on Tumblr or something? Your guess is your your guess would be that it's a clue as to where the key needs to go. To well, play. yeah, any dumb dumb could guess that. But so what you need to do is find out can, find somebody who can read this other language. I'm, I've been probably cut right because they're from the east. Who's it? Ivan. Maybe, possibly. Um, he may not be much of a scholar. If it's in like a like a weird dialect or something like that, I think you've established he's a nice guy, but not necessarily a scholar. Um, hey, right. hey, Ivan's dad. This key we stole. Can you read this? <laughs> um, <laughs> we found this in this key that we stole from a two-doored vault. All right, the Jaguars. Can you read it? Takes it from us. Oh, come on, man. We worked hard for that. <laughs> We're going okay, so we're gonna Door. stop here. Made of fire. We're gonna stop here. You have clues about the key that apparently it's more than just a valuable key you can sell. Mm. 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 Uh, you have to figure out how you're gonna get out. Which might be as simple as putting the disguises back on, just walk them out like you own the place. Or it could be something more complicated. Probably mm. it's gonna be more complicated because you're not the only thieves who decided it would be cool to rob the vault tonight. Mm. Have fun getting through the fire door. She dumb me the, the door, the fire door is down. Cats are still around. That's going to be permanently fixed. No, not permanently, but it's open right now. And with that, we are going to. Did stop. we take the? Bat? Yay! We got to actually play after two months. Yay!